So not a great one to start the podcast off on uh, this week. Um, a bit of bad news uh, about Obi Nadefo, who plays uh, Ragnar. Uh, in this episode of Stargate SG-1. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to read here some excerpts from uh, a GoFundMe page set up for him. On the evening of August 17th on Beverly Hills Boulevard, Los Angeles, after teaching his Saturday evening yoga class, which he taught for special needs children, Obi's body was hit directly from behind by a swerving (laughs) DUI driver moving at over 40 miles per hour, which is about 65 kilometres an hour for us. Oh, yeah. One leg was severed upon impact, the other was shattered, rapidly losing blood and had to be removed as well Jesus. in order to save his life. So both his legs had to be amputated from just above the knee. Mm. Uh, the hit and run driver was subsequently found by LAPD the following day and arrested for DUI. The incredible emergency crew and surgeons were continually amazed by Obi's lucidity throughout the event from 45 seconds after the moment of impact through the following two major surgeries. Obi pulled from deep within his soul to not only stay alive, but opted for early exercise of his upper body, which was miraculously untouched. His pelvis, spine, and head all barely with a scratch. The surgeon team has identified Obi as an excellent candidate for a new mode of prosthetic legs, which will be integral for Obi's active spirit and life as a performer, writer, and movement teacher. We are pulling together to raise funds to not only keep Obi fully alive and functioning, uh, but to help him soar with his dreams of uplifting the planet through the arts and through health education. If you are able to, please donate to Obi's GoFundMe to cover costs for the new prosthetic legs, surgery and hospital costs not covered by insurance, and making his home wheelchair accessible. We are seeking $200,000 to support Obi's survival and urgent medical transition to this new chapter of his life. Obi sends everyone his love from the depths of his heart and his exceedingly positive and optimistic about his determination to allow his body and soul to be a vehicle for good on the planet. Blessings to all, Susan Matrunga, Obi Ndefo's mum. Oh, uh, and as of this recording, his funds are roughly about $158,000 of his $200,000 total. So That's cool. People getting behind it. If you can or if you feel, you know, inspired to, by all means, um, jump onto his GoFundMe and um, every dollar counts. Like, what, a, what a story, though. Like, when it's as, as bad as it can be, the fact that it was not just a, an accident. It's someone that was driving drunk. And then on the other side, it's not just that there was this guy that was hit. It wasn't a guy that we're a fan of. Or, you know, it seems like a nice guy. He was teaching a special needs yeah. Like class right. like he's doing something so amazing so selfless and then someone else has done something so reckless and stupid and those things have come to like yeah that's just a yeah. horrible story all around but good like you Crazy. said people getting behind it so really i mean i've seen some some of the donations there people just one person donating like a thousand dollars jesus yeah. and i'm just like that's insane mm. i was watching the video of him <clears throat> in his recovery is pretty amazing kind of guy he said because he was standing behind his car mm. and the guy was driving around the corner and oh, collects, so he kind of jammed in between the back of his own car and the guy's car. That's what happened there. And he's like, look, I don't wish any ill on, on the guy. I hope he gets help that he needs because it was a DUI. He working stayed, out. Yeah, yeah. stayed positive through the whole he's, thing. Well, apparently when he was conscious when it happened, but he's like, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And so when I had to drag him to the side, it was pretty hectic. But, oh, yeah. yeah. But um, great spirits, yeah. great guy. Yeah, we'll um, we'll chuck up the uh, the link to the GoFundMe on our Facebook and um, Twitter if you want to donate. Get into Gate. This is episode one hundred and thirty-seven. We are talking Stargate SG One. The full Get Into Gate team is here. My name is Mitch. Joining me, as always, we got Maddie, hello, Brendan, hello, and Reese. Good day, guys. If you're listening to us for the first time, Reese is a first-time watcher of Stargate SG One. Each and every week, we are watching an episode for the first time with Reese. The rest of us, we're long-term fans, and we are re-watching it, looking at it from a bit of a nostalgic view, comparing that with a first-time watch, and uh, just. Going through the motions. Here we are, season seven, episode four. Yeah. We're up to going through the motions. It just dawned on me the other day, like how far. Like I know we've been doing this for a couple of years. We are like we're so far into this, like season seven. For Christ's yeah. sake, so uh, deep in the Orpheus. Oh my it's god, not even funny. Which Wait. Orpheus? All of them. <laughs> well, between all four of us, we're in every Orpheus possible. Yeah. So deep. Well, I run one less for Tilk now. I d- <laughs> <laughs> I reckon though we're so deep into SG one, but. We're only about halfway through the franchise as a whole, I think. Yeah, which is insane. <laughs> which is scary, or less than yeah. halfway. Just That's when we scary. start thinking we're, we're getting on and oh, we're running out of episodes, it's like, no, 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 we've got a couple of spin-offs here yeah, for you to keep you busy. I wasn't joking when I said it'll be 40 by the time we finish this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what this episode's about and uh, throw it over to Reese and see what he thought. No longer the invincible warrior he once was, Teal'c must adjust to his new limitations when he's wounded in battle. 
Through the help of Daniel, Teal'c visualises that Ryak and Braytek are being held prisoner in a Gould death camp. With the SG-1's help, Teal'c sets out to rescue his son and his mentor, but can he overcome his fears in time? Written and directed, surprisingly, considering the serious nature of this episode, by one Peter DeLuise. Yeah, boy. Mm. Yeah. Written and directed. I felt like it took a while before the credits came up, at least the writer and director credits came up, and I'm like, well, clearly this isn't a DeLuise. I'll be interested to see whether this is Martin Wood or whoever else, and no, DeLuise, yeah. his name all over it. It's a very good. serious episode. Reese, it's uh, you, you love Teal'c. I'm sure you don't like to see him down. You well, know? it was it was pretty epic, though. To see him down. Um, I do love a good Jafar Rebellion episode. Mm. Um, I mean, just starting with that shot of Tilk uh, when he came back and you don't realise he got shot in the pouch until yeah. there's that shot of him with just with smoke rising up from his stomach. And I'm like, holy shit, he got shot. Yeah. But um, that was epic. And then, yeah. Jack he's- does that, Tim, every week. <laughs> he should be used <laughs> to it. Now he's on Tritonin. Yeah, That's we'll just deal. see if that Tritonin's uh, working. But yeah, from, uh, from there, I mean, he spent most of the episode laying down, didn't he? Chris Judge, but um, no, nah, yeah, I thought it was pretty. Yeah, I thought pretty he epic. wrote it for a second. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what I was thinking going through it because I'm like, oh, he usually does the Jafar Rebellion ones, that sort of thing. But um, I, th- I thought it's too good. Oh, yeah, that's literally what I thought. It's a little bit too well written to be by Chris Judge, so it makes sense. But um, no, nah, yeah, lo- loved it. You liked that Tilk was a bitch. Nah, mate, he's uh, was he a bitch. He was a bitch oh, throughout I don't the whole feel thing. Feel good. Shut up. Not strong Still anymore. Still twice as strong as me and two good that, knees. Shut that, up. That, <laughs> that staff blast went through his pouch and damaged his mm, spine. He's on Tritonin. It's like the best <laughs> drug ever. And she upped the dose for like yeah, double right, or something. double the dose, yeah. What yeah. about heroin? Heroin's pretty good. But <laughs> no, we need Tritonin. I've never had the, uh, the Tritonin. Oh, you should try it. Tritonin. Yeah, try it. Which, you know, Blue apparently jello. you just kind of put a rubber stamp on your... Hand and yeah, there's no needle have it. That technology. Thing, mm. That thing kind of looks like one of those little like booger suckers you use on babies, like little turkey baster things that suck mm. out baby boogers and stuff like that. That's what that th- the little tritonin thing looked like to me. Yeah, it was very un. <laughs> the one you put vinegar in. I'll tell you who the real hero of that opening scene was. Well, mm. probably heroes, but definitely the first was uh, General Hammond and then, to a lesser extent, but only just Walter because they're there behind, like, the not the blast doors, just, like, the no, glass, glass. The mm. extremely bulletproof and blastproof glass. And when so it SG-1, yeah, yeah. When it wants to be when it needs to be. SG-1 are running through and there's just staff blasts coming through and then it goes back to the shot of Hammond, like, watching on and all of a sudden, just, like, right in front of his face. Didn't. Mm. Flinch mm. an eyelid, and no. I like clean targets, clean backgrounds. Yeah, cool. the dumb thing was to me is like O'Neill, like they put in their IDC, and he says close quarters withdrawal. So for God's sake, put down the blast doors. What mm. are they there for? Mm. Mm. That's the whole idea of them. You're always going to have that incoming, like uh, they had that spear come through the glass that time. Maybe it takes a little while for the screens to warm up when you turn them on, so you wouldn't be able to see. Yeah, that was a the tri- only explanation. <laughs> I need to see the shit. That was a tritium. Ah. That was a tritium spear, though. Granted, it was only thrown obviously by like a human, yeah. but somehow it managed mm. to. This is why I say we need thing. we need some kind of like when it's an emergency situation like that, we need like the ramp pulled back a little bit. We need some kind of secret oh. thing that only Earth. Staff know so that when they come through, they know to jump to like the left because there's like a, like a spike pit. Yeah, there's like a void or something. Yeah. So you get these, you get these Jafar just running. Like, oh. That is just like f- what about freaking genius? What about sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their oh, heads? I like it. I did. <laughs> we just know how hard they are to come by. <clears throat> Oh, absolutely. So, I just love the idea temper of... mutated sea bass. <laughs> I just love the idea of just the simplicity of just, like, pulling the ramp back. And because the gate's kind of slightly higher, just Jafar just walking in and just Pratt falling, yeah. like, straight down, like, two or three metres. Yeah. Or That's just brilliant. enough to, like, catch their toe and, like, snap their yeah. ankle. Yeah. And they just, yeah, just, like, an ankle tap through the Stargate, and yeah. then they just land flat on or their face on the ramp, and we just take them, kill them out. Or you a know, Sarlacc pit. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. From Star Wars. No, because then you've got to feed it. That's, you know... Mm. Yeah, oh, I guess you feed Jafar. it with Jafar. So. <laughs> there, I figure every creature deserves a warm meal. <laughs> so I was watching this and all I could think about was the term Daniel Superpower because 
I mean, I know we've only yeah. had two and a half, I three agree. episodes so far, but it's like shit's going down. He's like, then only now is he having memories of the fact that he mm. was mm. present with Ryak and Braytech yeah. when they got taken. And I'm like, why Why now when Tilk's in need? Like, is there some kind of psychic link between him and Tilk? They didn't really speak about that. It was just like, oh, now yeah, I'm remembering true. stuff. So. Yeah. And it was so, they telegraphed that so early on when he sits down with Tilk. Oh, how's your son going? Master! And then Master, and then I'm like, well, obviously that's Ryak. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. He you know, well, this leads into that something. Cooper added that bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need a voiceover. Yeah, the, <laughs> the editor. It's not, it's not coming through enough. This leads into something that I mentioned back in Full Circle. So if you, like, when you watch this episode, you see that Daniel was there as Ascended Daniel seeing it happen. Yeah. And they, they mention when they figure it out, it's like, um,. Braytac was captured three months ago. That was when they detected that little sort of signal coming through the Alpha Site gate. Mm. So Daniel was there. So all during full circle, it would have <laughs> like I get I get he had stuff going on. I get Daniel was really busy, but he couldn't have taken three seconds to go. Ryak's in a boy. <laughs> Ryak and Braytac have been captured. Um, here's the address. Go and save him. Uh, just no, he was too busy just pouting. Going, uh, Sam. Yeah, like he's, he was too worried about all these people on Abydos, but fuck Teal's surrogate father and actual son who are being uh, tortured. I'm too like, busy translating a tablet wrong. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, come on, Daniel. I mean, he did kind of beat himself up over it a little bit and, and Teal forgave him at the end, but mm. I was just like, oh, I don't know, man. Actually not... Like did the, they spoke about that right? That he could he didn't know how long ago the visions were from because we at this point we still don't know how long he was on that other planet or how long after mm, he disappeared in full circle moons. to the start of yeah. So like potentially it happened. I don't know. Like I started thinking, I'm like, is that when he was disappearing? Like that is that what we're meant to believe? Is that what he was disappearing to when he? I don't know if it necessarily was happening at exactly the same time, yeah. but it was at least three months. They said from yeah. like the the moment um, Braytac pressed his little remote control and deactivated the the field. Yeah. That was three months from when this episode happened. So mm. three months ago, Daniel was ascended. So he's obviously descended less than three months ago. I did like that um, he actually started to blame himself. That like he like started to vocalise it. Like, but oh, if there would have been like mm. a can there or something, he would have kicked it because he was like one stage, he's just like, ah. Oh, they're like, what? He goes, oh, it's just, this is all my fault. I mean, I was there and I did, I did nothing. Ah, oh, damn me, damn ascended Daniel, mm, naughty. And they're like, well, it's not, it's not your fault, bro. You're fine. Naughty. I was there. I saw the whole thing happen. Nothing I can do. Just watch. Powerless to interfere. Here. A coded energy signal was received and recorded through the Alpha Site gate three months ago. Hey, good old Carter. She's not like going, nah, you're, you're right. She's like, yeah, as long as you know you're a piece of shit. Anyway, yeah, this she's computer. like, I'm not, I'm not taking part in this pity party. I'm actually going to solve the f- problem that you couldn't do when yeah, you're this yeah. all-powerful ascended yeah. being. You still haven't been excited to say hello to me since we <laughs> since we saw each other again, ever. You know what Reese is waiting for? Hey, him doing that, oh, damn, it was my fault. I wish I could have done something. And someone just go. Jonas would have done something. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of kicking the can, Mitch, I think you might li- know this one. Yeah! Yes, I was thinking of that when I did <laughs> that, that the room bit before. Uh, what? Is that the room? No. 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 Um, Lord of the Rings, Aragorn. Aragorn. Uh. He actually broke his toe when he did that. Yeah. That's why that scream was so real. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Two towers. He That's thought he'd one. lost the two hobbits. Yeah. No, this is number two. The two towers. <laughs> and the Fangorn Forest. So Daniel Fungorn. talks about, uh, you know, maybe I've got some stuff to do, you know, being ascended. Maybe I didn't want to come back here because I was, you know, had the possibility of doing the greater good, blah, blah, blah. We figure out he's just been going back and forth between people that he knows just to watch them when they don't know. Mm-hmm. Like he's watching Braytac and Ryak getting slaved. He's watching Jack getting, uh, you know, as a prisoner. Yeah. In Baal's ship, watching he's, he's Carter watching Carter in the shower. I was going to say, he's watching Tokra <laughs> masturbate on the ground. <laughs> but it doesn't even have to. They leave the doors open. They're just like, you know what I watch? <laughs> Jackson will probably Hello? be in there somewhere. But what greater good has he been doing? He hasn't been doing mm. anything. We, we we flash back and we he's see been how experiencing fu- the universe. No, he hasn't. <laughs> he ha- how do you ex- know? Because that, we haven't seen it. Well, mate. he's been experiencing. He's just been doing anything about it. Yeah. What's yeah. the greater good of being ascended? Yeah. Well, and that was something that I had written down here. I was like, well, it gets Free to the. Porn. It gets. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you get that Live now. Live porn. You can get that. We can literally. <laughs> yeah, this is 1998 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 
2003. But yeah, it really does dial make up. you reevaluate. Yeah. It's he like. I'm waiting for dial, dial up. I'd rather be dead and ascended. You have to sit here and wait. For this shit. You can watch it and talk on the phone at the same time. <laughs> the annoying thing about dial-up was like you see the picture of the girl and it goes line by line, code by code, and you're like, oh yeah, there's the titties. And then down to the navel, still going. You said shit. this. Yeah. Oh, over. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna let Damn. him go. <laughs> Damn it, Reese! I was, I was gonna let him go. That. I was gonna let him go. I know. I waited to just before the punchline. And yeah. then you get to the navel, and then you get to the vagina, and like, God damn, I thought it was gonna be a cock. <laughs> oh, you kept it fresh there. That's good. Switch. That's yeah, not, you kept that fresh. Switch. But yeah, no, it really does make you think. Go like, would you ascend? Given the option, if the others are going to be watching, you're not allowed to actually do anything and make any change for good. It's like, well, what's the point? Mm. You know? it works in mysterious ways. Mm. Well, yeah, if you had. To- <laughs> Like we said, if you wanted to watch live porn, that's the only good thing about ascending. <laughs> yeah, that, ascending, and also ascending if you get blown circa up 1998, by but ascending circa 2019. Mm. I mean, what else? What you know? I mean, we've got Uber Eats now. What we're basically ascended. Yeah, there'd be two. There'd be two things that uh, you know, two conditions that I, I would I would ascend as long as Anubis blew my whole planet up and I could take my soccer ball. <laughs> then I'd be I'd go ascension. No worries. Would you what what kind of what kind of ascended sweater would you wear? Do you think? Oh, birthday suit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. What's the point of being you invisible start, if you're not going to be naked? You start appearing to people and they're like, <laughs> yes. "Can you put some clothes on?" Like, <laughs> I know you're trying to help me out here, get out of jail and shit, but yeah. you're just I can moving see your hip. little mouldy dick. Man, it's not really moving your hips from side to side. Your dick slapping on each thigh. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I tell you what, poor bloody Braytac has had a couple, a rough bloody couple of months. The last time we saw him. He was, like, dead on a beach with Teal'c swapping symbiotes. Yeah. And obviously, it's only been a little time since then. He's then been captured and then has spent the last three months being tortured on bloody Erebus. <laughs> Having to put up with Ryak telling him he's oh, shit. Oh, wouldn't that be the worst part? <laughs> oh, man. Like, if you're going to be captured and forced into, like, forced <laughs> sl- uh, servitude, it's like, oh, at least just get rid of that kid. Yeah. Like... When, <laughs> when, um, when Teal'c interrupted him. No, don't kill my son. Take me. Braytac's like, fuck, I've been trying to get him murdered for three months. <laughs> I'm feeling fine. Yeah. Yeah. I've just been looking like shit, so he's going to kill one of yeah. us. I don't care if it's me. I just don't want to be with Braytac's him Braytac's just like sitting at home, just sitting in his tent, just going like, man, I wish that kid was on Tritonin so I could steal it. <laughs> and then he'd run out before I do. Well, how much Tritonin does he carry with him if he's been there yeah, for three, three months? months worth. And what's, mm. Where's he keeping? Is he shelving that? Like, surely. Oh, I'd have to you be. know where he is. It's up his Orpheus. Well, yeah, well, that's it. Well, under, his, that's, under his that's, helmet. That's why it's called that, isn't well, it? Obviously. He's Orpheus. If he's anything, well, there's nothing in his pouch anymore. I was anymore. say, if he's like Teal, he's got an empty pouch. Yeah. So that's, that's oh, a yeah. whole handbag right there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Heaps of canisters of that He's got thing that. He's got some tissues, you know. He's got some lip balm in there. Yeah, I think when you when you think about Ryak the way that we do, the line where Teal'c asks O'Neill to look after him takes in a whole new meaning. Yeah. Because mm. he says, you know, if anything should happen to me, I want you to care for Ryak. And he's like, oh, buddy, come on. Um, yeah. Surely yeah. Bray takes it. Yeah, let's let's, <laughs> it, let's it, hope it doesn't come to that. It won't come to that. And then, like, Teal'c walks away and Daniel's doing that, like, look down <laughs> but look sideways out of the top of his eyes like, what? Ooh. And he goes, what? It's his son. And it's like, I get what you meant by that. It's like... I'm not. That's his son. It's his father and son. I'm not going to take away that bond. I'm not going to say that it's okay that I do that. But watching it from a point of view that Ryak's a little bitch and we don't like him yet, <laughs> is that he goes, you're going to look after my son. And he's like, oh, no, it's not going to come to that. And Daniel's like, why? And he goes, it's his son. Are you kidding me? Have you seen that bloke? Like, I'm not, <laughs> it's it's his Ryak, son. Right? I'm the not, only I'm not time, after the only time Jack's son. had anything to do with him is when he's trying to kill everyone with those fake teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't looking after that little shit. I think he pats yeah. his head occasionally. I yeah. totally didn't get that line, the it's his son line. I didn't get that at all. I was like, I, Yeah, I was like, what does he mean by that? that? Yeah. Because yeah. Daniel's like, you're looking after a kid? And he's like, it's his son. Leave him alone. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not a bad read on it. Yeah. That's the way yeah, I saw it. I buy it. that. As in he doesn't have a good track record of looking after kids. Is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie. Jack is like, good. Jack is like, why would the government Jack? let you do that? you got a P90 now, bro. <laughs> I mean, you look at Charlie. Don't Charlie walk into a kindergarten, no. <laughs> that, that Merrin kid that lost all their memories. Like, he doesn't have yeah. a good track record with kids. Mm. So. Yeah, Jack 2.0. Go on, yeah, hey, Jack here's school, yeah. don't call. Yeah, go be a sexual predator, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm totally... What else does a young boy want to be? <laughs> he was two weeks old, leave him alone. He's <laughs> just in these bloody straps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally vindicated, though. Remember we were talking about the Jello, and I had this weird thing where I just had this stupid OCD thing about the Jello diced in the, in the cups? Yeah. <laughs> well, lo and behold, 
Teal's in his bed and O'Neill is brought in Jello set in cups. Vindicated. No, you're not, because you're talking so? about putting. Weren't you talking about putting it in trays or something? <laughs> well, that was rude. No, that's what they're doing. They're putting it in trays and then cutting it up into cubes and putting it in the glass. Right. Whereas the Jello that Teal had was set in little plastic cups. And I'm like, why yeah. don't they have that in the commissary? Too much plastic, mate. Gotta save the world. Mm. Yeah. Don't kill turtles, you know. <laughs> yeah, they don't want those those um, glass. Oh, maybe that's the, the the darker edge of it is they didn't want to give Tilk the glass sort of you know because oh, he was upset because he was upset and they thought he might break it off himself and that's why they had to give him Jello in plastic cups. That's the dark underbelly of this. GC. He'd have to go right up his arm, wouldn't he? Oh, he like go a star blast didn't yeah. kill him. <laughs> He's on tritonin, so it just heals yeah. as he's cutting along. God damn it. Ah, God God damn it. <laughs> like, double the dose. Uh, you do that big main artery in your leg or whatever it is that you can bleed out in, like, two set, two minutes. Yeah. Or two minutes. I'm going to be honest, and I feel bad the way that you started all this off, Reese. I, I, yeah, I didn't really dig this episode. I, I found it actually a little bit... Oh, yeah. It was a little bit boring. I don't know, just for the first four, I'm like, this is by far my least favourite of the four episodes so far this season. And I don't even know what it is because I love Braytech. Anything with Braytech is immediately mm. better. Yeah. Braytech plus Jafar Rebellion on Minus any level. Ryak. But yeah, maybe it was the Ryak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did. Well, Ryak has a, the emblem on his head. When did he get that? He's always had it. He's always had has it. Has he? Has he? Yeah. Just a black one? He's just got like an yeah, ink yeah, yeah. He doesn't Ooh, have a gold one. Don't, don't be it's racist black. about it, but <laughs> he's had an emblem. I said it. Just I just Mate, said emblem. I didn't say what colour it was. He's got a black one. So he's got... <laughs> no, oh, okay. So he's had that since he was a kid? Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, they've, okay. maybe now that he's an a more cl- closer looking to an adult, they've given him like a bigger one or it's changed position on his head or something, so you've noticed it more. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just didn't know. I didn't really notice it when he was a kid, I guess. Cause, and then I was like, has he had that after... Bloody Apophis was killed. That's weird. Mm. Yeah. Well, what? Mitch, if, if you didn't like that, it sounds like you could have been part of... Bishway? <laughs> Bishway? Bishway? Oh, Bishway? You did get the second one. <laughs> Bishway? Bishway? <laughs> that bitch. Um, so for anyone who hasn't heard, this is uh, Bish what? So because I love <laughs> season seven so much, I'm going to find it really hard to be subjective and objective about this season. Mm. So I trolled the internet to find some negative reviews uh, for the season seven episodes. This one goes, uh, one of those super lame episodes where the captors stand around, pause, look ready, and get beaten up. The captors and enslavers rush with their weapons running towards the slaves, but the slaves actually use their weapons that they just took from the aforementioned loser guards to shoot them. Oh, that was a great little shot, wasn't it? It (laughs) Captors don't use weapons. Slaves use the weapons and score hits. Captors wear armour that is useless. Why? The white guy works with the black guy, etc. Why? This just took a dark turn. Uh, it's your review, mate. <laughs> super lame. Three out of ten. Wow. Ouch. I, I, I have to agree. I didn't. The first twenty minutes was a bit annoying because yeah, it's just Tilk whinging. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I think that's. It's, I struggled it was, to recover from that. Yeah, yeah, and then it was a lot of that Jonas kind of prophecy show. Mm. To me, it was like half of that. It was like Daniel going, "Oh, I you ever think." You know, trying to remember something really important. Yeah, I forget it. Mm. Uh, maybe maybe I'll yeah. try Kellner reaming with Teal'c and that'll help. Yeah. The, the best yeah. bit for me Teal'c's was... like, oi, I don't do this anymore. Yeah, but let's just try it because, you know, it's yeah. just a way for me to remember something that they, they couldn't write anything else. The only, okay. good, the only good bit for me was when Jack's like, we need a distraction. Think bigger. Think bigger and bigger. And then they end up, you know, going to the ship. Yeah. Blowing up the, the anti-gravity thing. And then the ship falling. That was the coolest bit. And mm. then they shoot the the guys on the hill. They kept running up the hill. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where they yeah, aimed th- the guns. I think in a way it could pipes. have almost been two separate episodes. It kind of felt like two episodes mashed together in a way. In like you could have had like a whole episode <laughs> of just Teal'c dealing with the trauma. Like yeah, dealing with and boring. recovering well, yeah. and all that kind we of stuff. We need some in the bottom seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have got, if you like those, you know, psychological character studies, that could have gotten really interesting. In the same way there was, um, what was that one from season four when he was breaking his brainwashing and stuff like that. They could have yeah. done a whole episode like that. And they could have done a whole episode of the action, bang, bang, saving, you know, saving Braytac and Ryak and liberating all these new Jafar rebels and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, but they kind of sort of meshed them together and then they used all the, the action at the end for Tilk to get his mojo back from his depression during the first half. So it was there, but I think, yeah, he could have used maybe another five minutes to just kind of flesh out some of that stuff. So it didn't, some of it felt a bit rushed. Mm. But I still, I love this episode. I think to where it lost me a bit was the, the chief guard, like the... the... <clears throat> Oh, the bleach blonde, blonde hair, guy. yeah, yeah. Jafar guy, because like he just didn't sell his position very well. He's like, <laughs> you don't work, you'll die, kill yeah. them. And I'm like, dude, pl- mate, I don't know. Yeah. You, you couldn't. Well, that's in the, the work experience guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, just yeah. A, he's just a cranky middle management kind of guy. Just if hates you don't his know job. where you work, you die. <laughs> yeah, I just got lost. Doesn't matter. This guy wasn't standing in the right place. Let's <laughs> kill him. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, this guy is harsh. Yeah. Yeah, like, I've had was, bad bosses before, but this guy. He was definitely overcompensating for a lap pinky, I reckon. Like, he was just, like, trying to be all big and, and mighty, and he just... Lap pinky? A lap pinky. A, a, a stinky dick, a little tiny dick. Oh, we all, yeah, we've all lap been there. Lap pinky. Um, I noticed that SG1 didn't start backing up Tilk and um, bloody Ragnar when they got tortured. It was only just when Tilk was about to die, yeah. and they still didn't shoot. They're like, "Ah, oh, Tilk can go through." I mean, he's just been all through that rehab of getting like a staff blast with his stomach. He can handle a little bit of torture. Yeah, He'll be all right. So f- it's like for me, it was like um, Tilk says to Jack, "Incursion is the only way we can go forward, O'Neill." And Jack's like, "Well, not really, but it's your son, so do whatever the hell you want. I'm staying here." Mm. <laughs> yeah, and then oh, his like plan the failed. Camp. Yeah, yeah. And his plan yeah. failed, and he's like, all right, now let's do it properly, people. And when he tried to say, this is the way we're going to do it, it was about, what, 60 seconds screen time after he said to O'Neill, I still don't know whether I'm up to coming along on this thing. I don't know whether I'm going to, <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether I'm going to be a hindrance to you. Yeah. Basically, pull my ass up if I start getting out of the line. Later on, he's like, this is what we should do. He's like, oh, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, sure, Tilt, let's do it. Mm. Like, dude, that, take that your own advice. I wish they'd like, let more into that. Why, why was that white-haired guy so trigger happy and then all of a sudden they have intruders and he just tortures them chucks them back in the tent to rest yeah. <laughs> maybe he wants to bring the Sholvar to Anubis yeah isn't that what it was it was like right, he wanted to torture guess. the Sholvar and... why has he put him back in the tent with the others they were Baal people right were they Baal people yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah right still Baal but I thought he was like all the ghoul hate him right I thought he wanted to torture him and then let him recover so he could be well enough for him to torture him again like they didn't have a sarcophagus to throw him in oh classic Apophis move that one yeah plus no, he looked strong he could work yeah that's true right um, yeah because um, Baal is now the the leader of the United Alliance of the <laughs> System Lords oh, don't get, alert the UASL if you don't mind <laughs> don't get yeah. used to that I think that's the one and only time this is <laughs> yeah, mentioned that surprised me yeah one. I was like that's what the what there's Trooper like, been here with a pen I was like <laughs> bitch what script? <laughs> everything needs a name <laughs> so from here on out do they are they all following him or are you just only hear from Baal pretty much only hear from Baal I guess no there's Predominantly. You'll see stuff. Yeah, we'll see how we go. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. How did you feel about the uh, the gym scene? Just everyone just pumping, except everyone except for Jack, just pumping iron. That was so lame. <laughs> it was a weird. It was a weird way for them oh, to be like, hanging out. Yeah, like Carter getting stuck into it, like mm. and just like but having a full on in depth con- like mission conversation while she's in the gym. And got gym hair, gym hair. We all oh, yeah. that. Another hair casual, the casual gym race. hair. But like, is this the first occurrence of um, sleeveless Daniel, or is this just? I think it might be. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. when I should have known. If I hadn't have read the credits, that's when you know it's yeah. Deloise episode. Because I like used to. There's a lot of um, uh, beefy. What are beef you? Cake. Beef cake. A lot yeah, of beef he loves cake the beef going cake. on. It's a wonder he stuck Carter in there at all. It's like you're just getting in the way of all the sweaty men that I've got on screen. <laughs> yeah. Was she Tilted. talking about War of the Worlds or Signs? Signs. Signs. I already yeah. tell. Yeah. So they fly halfway across the galaxy in a highly advanced spaceship, but they don't use their technology to take over the planet. You know what their weakness turned out to be? Water. I mean, if that's true, why go to all the trouble to invade a planet that's two-thirds water? Not to mention the rain. Why do you watch those movies if all you're going to do is cut them up? Come on, don't you occasionally like to see if they're getting it anywhere close to right? Yeah, that's got to be science, doesn't it? Because that was water. War of the Worlds was like... It's the um, same thing. Uh, a virus or something, wasn't it? Wasn't there? Like- no, they were drink. Oh, well, probably. Yeah, but I think in the Tom Cruise one, which was probably later anyway. Mm, he was drink- yeah. drinking out yeah. of the lake and shit. Oh, I don't remember that. But yeah, I think you could be right. The, ori- the original serial was probably like a virus. Mm. 
I mean, was spoiler alert not a thing in 2003? Because Carter just gave out the f***ing ending of that movie. <laughs> so well, I guess like, she didn't say what movie it was. Yeah, when no, but I feel out, like we've come, come out 2003. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, like I feel that they've already said, established what movie. Maybe not if he goes, why do you watch those movies? But I'm like, you're just giving out the twists. Of a yeah. Shyamalan movie, yeah. like his yeah. third feature film, like he's still yeah. the guy about the twist. Yeah, he hadn't he hadn't become like the punchline Shyamalan by that stage. But I guess he if was... you're a big enough sci-fi fan to watch Stargate, you're probably gonna watch. Oh Science. no, I mean yeah, in world, yeah. I mean purely in world, like Samantha Carter telling Daniel Jackson and anyone else in the gym the right. end. Right, yeah. he's been dead. He's still trying to figure out his memory. So yeah. he's, he's not going. He's not. Yeah, he's got too <laughs> much to do. He's just, not going to. Yeah. He watched it when he was ascended. He yeah. didn't remember it. Dan- Daniel only goes to IMAX to watch documentaries. <laughs> yeah. so he's not going to watch a uh, mainstream film. He's there watching documentaries, eating popcorn, then talking about ancient Egypt. Wrong. Yeah. Oh man, imagine watching the movie yeah. like that with him. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> hey, so I was listening to the um, audio commentary, and there's this weird. Um, there's a standards and practices thing that Peter Dudley's had to work around. So when Jack was looking through his um, his little scope, like and checking things out, standards and practices wouldn't let the crosshair linger on someone's head. Wow. Right, I was wondering because about it was that. an insinuation that it was going to be a headshot. So they had to kind of shoot it and and change the frame a little bit so that yeah, like a chest shot, like the crosshairs on a chest, fine, or an mm. arm, whatever. But like insinuating a headshot, no, nah, standards and practices wouldn't allow it. Wow. Mm. Yeah, because I was thinking that about Ryak because it was intentionally not even on his body mm. when when O'Neill's mm. aiming at him to see him. Yeah, because yeah, oh, that makes sense anyway. But and when he was shoot- when he was shooting the Jafar, you notice the the bullet sort of makes the spark at their stomach. I thought that um, O'Neill was going for the for the symbiote shot just to so make sure they do die. But just and the, slowly. And just so Teal can't well. go, oh, yeah. I want to get a symbiote back and get rid of the Tritone. It's like, no, nah, we killed them all. We killed yeah, them yeah. all. Yeah. Shot them dead in the head. Dead. Um, and at the end, Jackson was like, oh, I feel like I just really belong. The whole time I was in it before, five f***ing yeah. seasons, six seasons, I never felt like I really belonged. Anywhere, and right? And now I do. So I'm like, that, oh. The year that he Shut spent up, Shanksy. on... Um, <laughs> Line, what's the Abydos. plan? Abydos. So the year he spent on oh, Abydos, <laughs> the people that he got to know, helped yeah. teach them a language, learn a language, learn the in. history, met the love of his life before he met several others. Mm. You know, <laughs> what? he never felt like he belonged there. Got them all murdered, yeah, so... Up, Obviously not, because <laughs> was... he, he opened that Stargate immediately <laughs> and just was waiting for Jack to throw a tissue box or... Apophis to come and kill them all. Like he didn't <laughs> care at that point. You know, I'm just going to unbury that Stargate. See what happens. <laughs> well, for the first, <laughs> I need some tissue. For the first couple of years, like his his raison d'etre was like, oh, I need to find Sharae. I need to find Sharae. Midway through season three, she's dead, and he's like, oh, I need to find her son. I need to find her son. End of season three, Shifu ascends with Omar. So it's like, yeah, what was Daniel doing for all of season four and five? Mm. What mm. was his motivation? So. Trying to get out of his contract. Like the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He wanted to ascend, obviously. Yeah. Should have left him on Torment of Tantalus Planet. My favourite bit was the pep talk that Jack was meant to give to Tilk. Yep, you're right. Not exactly peppy. Oh, what you want me to say to the guy? He's lost his confidence. I think he was looking for you to reinstill something. Well, if he really has lost his mojo, there's nothing I can say that's going to get it back for him. Mojo? <laughs> mojo. The libido, the life force, the essence, the right stuff. <laughs> what the French call a certain... I don't know what. <laughs> Colonel O'Neill has officially informed me that I have my mojo back. Go, baby! Very good! <laughs> that was Daniel at the end. That was so crazy. <laughs> it's one of his first memories to come back. <laughs> His Austin Powers <laughs> references. Uh, <laughs> He's like, my wife's name's Sharae and very good. <laughs> See, my favourite bit was um, was Daniel doing his translating. What's this? Uh, he's dressing that warrior down. Do the bidding of Baal. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, paraphrase. Come on, Tokim. Come on, Tokim. Make talk. The poison you're... Cursed by the wear of horns, you're sloppy. Oh, rock on, see Now for crying out loud. I love they brought that back. That was back in season three when Tilk said that to Cronus, Kelmato Kim, uh. which is cursed by the wearer of horns, which apparently is a really massive burn in ancient Gould or whatever it is. Yeah, right. I yeah. felt like that Jafar leader, Blondie, 
He said Cree a lot more than we've heard of Jafar say oh, that in yeah. seasons. Yeah. Like he he's it's like he's more aware than anyone else that Cree means a lot of stuff. Cree Cree. Cree Cree. Cree 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 Cree. Cree. Just three of the Jafar's name was Cree, that's all. <laughs> no wonder they lost the battle. I thought you were saying something else. Cree. Cree. Uh, I did Cree. I creed. No, I was uh, talking to the other Cree. I didn't Cree. I did like the um uh, the Three Musketeers moment where you've got Braytac, Ragnar, and Teal'c, all kind of that standing shot where it all zooms in and they all mm. kind of flip their staff weapon in a different way and fire. All, all you needed was like little Raya because of D'Artagnan down the bottom, just with his Zat gun at the bottom or something <laughs> like that, just to finish it off. Yeah, that was a pretty sweet shot. I think that's what your bad reviewer was saying. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Talking at the end. But yeah, I, I love that. Like, you just have them running straight at them and then yeah, it's the like, hero yeah, shot. I yeah. got this shit. Like, we're, we're pretty well in charge right now. Yeah. Boom. But I actually rewound that a couple of times because the, I think out, the cor- I was, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, is that Ryak? And I'm like, no, 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 someone far cooler. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like waiting, Real waiting. Man. He's like 10 metres away, eight metres away, six. And he's like, and now point blank, boom, three yeah. in the face. Yeah. I'm like, that is Brave so heart. fucking Tilt's cool. Tilt's like, hold, hold, <laughs> now. That's Reese's one. That's his. <laughs> Classic Jafar, though. I do love it how when Jack, uh, sorry, Daniel and Sam go up to the ring, ring up to the ship, and there's just no Jafar there. And even yeah. when the, mm. the ring, they walk past, they didn't hear the rings. Mm. Next minute, they go and plant the C4 on an unguarded Peltac, come back, and then there's like half a dozen dudes just in the ring yeah. ring room. Yeah. yeah they, mm. They'll they change, they were changing shit? shift, yeah. It takes a while to get from one side of the ship to... It's a mother ship, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, it's the little um, anti-grav thing, which is its own little corridor. So they've got a lot to deal with, mate. Yeah. And it's a new ship, so they would have got lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they, they think they're safe. Finally, the Goa World are actually doing something... Right, and they do their own like iris. They got their own force field iris. Finally, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like finally, and then we just. Take oh yeah, care of I that. guess that's true. But wouldn't they be on high alert because they took out the Jafar at the gate? They may not have known. Yeah, surely They've someone been there. was there for, they? for hours though. Mm. Well, they I guess, don't radio in. I yeah, guess the they same. Just don't blow the horn. Uh, blee, uh, b- blow a horn if you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they must have got a chance to blow the horn. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> everyone, in, everyone in inside the ship is inside like a like a soundproof airtight spaceship, so yeah. they can't hear the horns. <laughs> they can't hear over the engines. Uh, yeah. Did you hear something? I don't know. Someone probably farted. It's the gravity but thing. My thought also <laughs> of um, when um, when you see the flashback and you see Braytac. Um, being captured, he was in like his full armor with his cape and stuff like that. So it's like, surely he wasn't captured and put to work, and then he's organized a rebellion and escaped and got all, all the way to the gate and managed to get all his gear on. So I'm wondering if maybe his idea was to liberate all those Jafar, and maybe him and Ryak and a few others actually arrived on like a cloaked cargo ship and were trying to like rescue people and take them out through the gate or something like Weren't that. Weren't they trying to get out in the flashback? They were trying to get out through the gate and then they. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is Braytac is in like his full armor and cape and stuff like that. So yeah. it's like if he was, if he'd already been captured, surely he wouldn't be allowed to keep all his armor and his cape. I yeah, assume no. he just went into the camp, got them, and then they were on their way out and they got busted. Yeah, that's oh, what that I thought. Oh, that could have worked. Because how they went, how uh, who was it, O'Neill or someone was saying, oh, that'd be a good planet to go get some soldiers for the Jafar Rebellion. Yeah, I assume they went in there, maybe talked to a couple of them and said, oi, yeah, we'll, but- we'll come back for you or something like that, and then went to go back out the gate. And then that's when they got captured. Yeah, but my point is, is how would how did Braytac get there? If there's an Irish protecting the Stargate, he couldn't have yeah, gated. He point. couldn't have gated in. Yeah, okay. So yeah. he either would have had to have let himself get captured to well, get, no. as his way to get in and then escape, or like I was saying, have a cloaked cargo ship and land land yeah. on the planet somewhere, but then decide to evacuate as many people as possible. Because that was the um, Stargate. that's what that was the intel we got from Daniel because he saw that in the vision that that Braytac had that. Thingo that he used yeah. on the yeah, DHD. But he, yeah, yeah, but how he, did Braytac get onto that planet? Well, he used that to get on and then no, to he, get off. No, he took that off the Jafar, remember? Once once they secured the off gate, he took it off the wrist of the, oh, of the right. Jafar yeah. and that's how he deactivated the um, mm. the iris thing, I think. Cooper! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my sort of headcanon is, yeah, he either allowed himself to get captured or he just landed on a cloaked cargo vessel but decided he, he left could, it there. Yeah, he could take more people through the, um, through the gate. Yeah to the Alpha site, then he could sort of load up the cargo ship Bad and try move. and get out of all. Yeah. So those or cargo guess... ships are pretty big. Mm. Yeah. Like... I just put a couple of branches over it, mate. It should be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose, and the other thing I suppose is if they did have a cloaked cargo ship, when they did get captured, 
why don't they just run away and find it again? So, yeah, yeah true, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I saw him and Braytag. No, as well. I mean, we shot that on 16 millimeter. Yeah. Normally, the show is shot on 35 millimeter, and then we uh, also did a little bit of force processing for those who might know that is, what that is. And that was just an attempt to get a lot of contrast and a lot of grain in the image, something that seemed a little more removed from reality, something that existed perhaps only in memory. Try to imagine, if you will, that you're a filmmaker and you're having to show the audience an image that is not completely a flashback and not completely a dream, but fragments of a memory of when you had some sort of omniscient uh, perspective. That's what I got out of that. (laughs) That's exactly what I got out of that. <laughs> That's what I love about Peter Deloise. Like you just don't expect him to go that deep into it, but f- he loves his work. Yeah, I was waiting for a poop joke there. At some point. <laughs> no, it's time for the get in the gate, hairy mailbag. Uh, Laurie Steinel, <laughs> hashtag Lucifer, has got in contact with us on Twitter. Uh, Laurie says, totally up for an episode slash season slash series rewatch. After discovering the Get Into Gate podcast, I was inspired to rewatch the whole series near the middle of season two now, though this time round I'm watching on Prime and not my DVDs. Hashtag Stargate SG1. Ooh. Welcome. Welcome. Got a couple of iTunes reviews here. This one is from, this is a five-star review. I love this podcast from Ambitron. Five-star review here off iTunes. Um, look, if you can give us an iTunes review, that's a huge help. Get the, the word a five out for the star podcast. One. Oh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that just goes without saying. I mean, why would you log on if to you do less us, than a five-star? I mean, if you give us a one, we'll spend at least 10 minutes tearing you apart. At least but 10. <laughs> this one's <laughs> from one Ambatron. A lot longer off the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ambatron writes, this is the best... And funniest Stargate podcast. I don't usually listen to podcasts, but this one holds my interest and has me laughing out loud at work. LOL. Nice. I done. definitely recommend giving these guys a listen if you like Stargate or anything nerdy, sci-fi related. Boom. Ambitron. Thanks, Ambitron. Sounds like a robot. Thank you, Ambitron. Oh, you're dead right there, Reese. Hey, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't mind an Ambitron. Subtle Mystery has got in touch with us. bot. <laughs> Sun or Mystery has got in touch with us and given us a new way to listen to Stargate, uh, to uh, get into Gate. He says, finally up to date with Get Into Gate, I've uh, I've been listening to the back catalogue of episodes at one and a half times speed. Do Is it to make Brendan sound interesting? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had that one up your sleeve for? I, I, I literally just thought about it. <laughs> I don't believe you. That's kind of, that's kind of genius. Yeah, I, I did that for a little while with a bunch of podcasts, and I like went away for I think two weeks, and I just because I, I listen, there's like probably ten podcasts, ten hour long podcasts I listen to every week. So I just if I fall mm. behind, I'm like, well, I'm gonna make them up, and I did it like okay, twice the speed, and it's very, very wow. strange when you go back to listening to people talk yeah. at normal speed. It sounds wrong. Although I was one of those podcasts I was listening to yesterday, a guy watches his streaming. He said some services don't have, like Netflix might not have it, but Hulu or something in the States, I don't know. He watches his TV in like 1.5, 1. one po- like 1.9 speed. Not even two, oh. 1.9. Yeah, he's like, just know, be yeah. Alvin and the Chipmunks oh, I, stop. What does he's he like, do with the rest of his spare time? <laughs> Watch his <laughs> porn at two times the speed. <laughs> don't feel as bad when you get through half the movie before you come. <laughs> Mate, you always skip to the best bit. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah. most uni lectures are recorded now, so all the students play them at 1.25 the speed and don't bother going. <laughs> nice. It's way smarter. <clears throat> Why do they even have lectures then? Just send it out on a podcast. Because they have to make money somehow yeah. on parking. There's they an- do. Everyone <laughs> needs a, a certificate at the end of their four years, so that's how they make their money. Yeah. There's an episode of Scrubs where like, the teacher walks in to do a lecture and there's like just an empty room and then there's one nerd sitting in the middle and every other room just has little uh, tape recorders on it. So when he walks in, <laughs> it's that one guy who just starts running around pressing record <laughs> on every single one of them. <laughs> It'd be hilarious if there was just one guy in the lecture theatre. He's just still sitting up the back row. <laughs> yeah. So you have to use man. the microphone. Just not paying attention. <laughs> just happens. like yeah. playing that Angry Birds. Think, and they're looking at their phones. <laughs> <laughs> Five-star review here, Poop Physics. Oh. 
from Mori. Oh, I Morina. thought Pig Physics was their screen name, Morina. and I was like, this is perfect. Morena 36 from the United States, one of the great states. Absolutely. United States. United. In-depth discussions of the physics of using a wormhole as a latrine. What's not to love? Absolutely. I never well, thought that would have the traction that it did. Oh, I always knew that, baby. <laughs> Mate, that's when we really took off. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know who we were until that episode. <laughs> Wasn't it Lincoln that brought it up, too? Probably. <laughs> well, they talk about other things, too. Love getting the additional perspectives of someone who isn't already a fan of the show. I believe that's Mitch. And <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> keep up the great work, guys. Well, Thanks, thank you. Marina. And Thanks, we Marina. will endeavour to keep up the good work. The great work. The great work. Oh, I can, I can commit to good. I don't know if I can commit to great. <laughs> and finally, uh, five-star review, Funniest Around by Ali Jards from the United States. With Just a Z. S- Smoking with the states over here, mate. Uh, the funniest Stargate podcast <laughs> oh, yeah. around, and really well produced. Is that a joke? Don't, that's a, that's a G <laughs> is up. That, is that postseason five? <laughs> which, Ali, which part? Ali or Ali? Yeah. Very been sarcastic. Listening, been listening since the first season. <laughs> Only gripe is that lately a huge chunk of the episode is devoted to reading reviews. Oh, we'll skip this one. Well, <laughs> okay, you're adding to the problem here. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, even... w- I wish they'd spend more time on the episode. Don't know what you're talking about, Ali, yeah. to be totally honest. Well, oh, I think in fairness, when we did do that, we did like probably a couple of episodes, they were pretty terrible episodes, well, and we thought, no, let's we... not talk about a shit episode, let's just talk about how good we are, because we never disappoint. <laughs> we did it for all of season six, because we had to find a way to get through season Season six. That's that's what we well, have the mailbag every, I see, every week. I see this podcast as not only a podcast to listen to, but also a podcast to be on. So if you oh, want to be on the show, get in contact. Write a five star review. We will not read out <laughs> yeah. three stars or below, yeah. uh, and Ooh. we'll be lucky if we read out a four yeah. star. <laughs> but yeah, by all means, it's it's by, it's for people to jump on and be, actually be on the show. Get mm. a shout out. And I think our episodes have gotten longer. When we don't add mailbag, they're about a 40-minute episode. Yeah, that's when we, true. When we it's have added mailbag, yeah. we're consistently over an hour now, I think, mm. most of the time. Mm. So I think all in all, you kind of get... I, I do miss the big mailbags. We can just get really loose and, and do whatever we want. But Like a full extra podcast. Yeah, like the big you know, hour-long just mailbag specials. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, and if you don't like them, then you can just skip that. But. Yeah, because we can tend to do a lot of the longer form stuff, like where people can post questions and we can go off on about it for 10 or 15 minutes. We can't really do that in one of these... Um, one of these mailbags, but um, we just we just fly also off the, the cuff quality and just of mail is really skip it's really skimpy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's really so slipping. much of the mailbag so full we have to empty it every recording session. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> we're just really bad at managing our time, so we kind of just throw stuff in and we're, absolutely we're too busy really producing the show. Oh, tell you what, those <laughs> <laughs> those pre-show meetings just get go on and, and on yeah. and on. And like Reese's theory, if this was a one-star review, still with the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Still, still be works. happy. You know still what? Ali's <laughs> my Ali might be our smartest uh, listener, writer, inner, yet because she might have a real problem with the show. Thank you. Writer, yeah, absolutely. She up. might. Um, don't assume genders, mate. No, that's just, that's true. <laughs> could be a writer, outer, could be you don't Ali know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Is that. Could be Walid Ali. They, they, have, they might have a massive problem with the show, but mm. their way of getting it across, but not being. Torn apart until now. Pat, he's like, yeah. here's a five star review, but here's a problem I have. Rather than yeah. go one star, because we'd be like, whatever, no one else is complaining. That it's like five yeah. star. It's like, well, you might have a point, but we can't hate you God too much. Yeah, it's good. Getting five stars. They, they, they didn't go full Zoe on us, so it's fine. Yeah. No, we're probably not no. going to change though. Not offended. Uh, let's get. No, the next look, guy. I think it's important for people to, uh, even if they don't agree with the uh, the greater majority, absolutely let us know. Yeah, let us. Yeah, know. if you guys we'll... would prefer us to get rid of the mailbag and put a big mailbags, you know, every half season. Or something. If that's what you prefer, let us know. We may, may yeah, not do true. it. We'll probably just ignore that. <laughs> yeah, we could, you know. <laughs> but the irony well, is it'll, it'll add stuff to the mailbag, you see? So you mm. just, so you, you just, know, yeah, you're it's the it. snake eating its own tail or whatever it is. It's like that, its own that dick. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I should have said, obviously. <laughs> I should have read the room and gone to a dick sucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say a cliche if you're not going to change it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It's time, time to find out, out if Reese has been paying attention. attention. All right. Five, five questions for five. you, Reese. Oh, okay. 30 seconds on the clock. You? Your time starts after this. In an attempt to sympathize 
What colour gelatin did Jack offer Tilk? Green. Correct. According to Daniel Jackson, Baal is now in control of what? The UASL. Yeah, I'll take that. How long did Jack <laughs> prepare in front of a mirror to give Tilk a pep talk? Oh, two hours. Incorrect. According to Tilk, what does Keck mean? Uh, like weak or dead. Correct. What does Tech Mate mean? To hello, old friend or something. Yeah, I'll give you that. Welcome. Friends well met. Yeah. And the last, how long did Jack talk in front an of hour? you for? 20 minutes. It, it was, was an, an hour. hour, mate. I said an hour? Yeah! I don't think you made yeah. it. Can we get the playback on that? I, heard, I even heard the fucking ding, bro. You just don't want to give it to me. You said two hours. But, um, <laughs> you asked me again. Yeah, Boom, I baby! I made mistake of doing that. Apologies to all the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody wins. Everybody wins. Everyone, Everyone gets a prize. Kind of took the shine off it there, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> shine off what? The segment. My win. Oh, no one cares about that. <laughs> Trust me. You did bring in something that I forgot to mention though. Is the is the keck keck meaning death and weakness? Mm. Back in first ones, unas in the unas language, keka. Doesn't that mean death? Car means no, and kekar means like death, danger. Danger, yeah. So I like that little bit of continuity, kekar. but perhaps no, death, no danger. That the Gua world and the and the Unas living on that planet kind of almost yeah, the, spoke the same language, the, and the then Unas as being the mate, the first hosts, the Gua world have just yeah. taken that as a derivative of yeah, their language. and that's gone into yeah, the of, into the Gua world <laughs> language. <laughs> I do like that. Though. Yeah, I mean, it all means the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello. No, I said. F- you. Oh, my bad. Different dialects. <laughs> All right, that's episode 137 of Get It A Gay Talk and Orpheus. We will be back next week to talk episode five of season seven, Revisions. Mm. Until then, you can uh, follow us uh, on socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast. Uh, drop us a line. And if you want to get up into our Orpheus, join us on Patreon. There we go, patreon.com forward slash get into gate. Just like. Just like. These guys, Josh Cassidy, on ya, Josh, JC, yeah. Sundance Kid, JC, old Dan Bannister, <laughs> DB. I got yeah. one of them in my hand. I was gonna say the Bannister. There needs to be a stair joke, like sliding down the Bannister. And so a, slide uh, down his Bannister. Yeah, slide down your Bannister, buddy. A Brandon, Brandon Reshk. Brand, Brandon Reshk. Uh, Reshk. Captain, Captain Yosho. Uh, it's R E S C H K E. Yoshi. R E S C H K E. I don't know what that means. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. Welcome to my Orpheus. And thank you mm. for and joining the team. Anything that happens on from here on out, part of it's your fault. For the show. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're legally involved. Individually, I am Mitch <laughs> underscore Lewis on Twitter and Instagram. Matty. At High Beach Matty. Brendan. At the Bren Gibson. And Reese. I'm at the Flying Gibson. Catch you back next week for more Get Into Gay Talking Revisions. Get Into Geek.